Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, Nine Motor Gang here, and today I'm going to be showing you a super common and super popular technique called boxing that you should use on all of your robots. So before we get into it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, as this directly helps support my channel so I can make more videos like this. All right, let's jump into it. Also, just a disclaimer, uh, these C channels were bent before um, I made this video. These were from the uh, Tier 3 Buddy Hang that uh, fell a lot. So let's say that we have two C channels and we want to connect them together like this. Uh, maybe this is like a cross brace for your dry base, doesn't matter, but we don't want to connect two C channels like this. So what a lot of newer teams would do is they'll just kind of get their screw in and newer teams, they'll just get their screws on and then they'll go ahead and put their nuts on. And also right here, I'm using caps nuts in order to build this. This is because this is just a test video. If you're building this on an actual robot, I would recommend using nylock nuts for this as those are less likely to come loose on you but they would just kind of screw these on and these two pieces are connected, but this isn't going to be very strong because as you can see, as this experiences force, this can just like bend. And I'm not a very strong guy, but like I can just bend these C channels up and down however much I want. So in order to fix this, we want to take advantage of the strength of the C channel. So instead of having this connected at just one point of contact right there, that's extremely susceptible to bending because it's not braced at all, it's not supported. So what we want to do is instead of having this top C channel just connect to the top part of this C channel, we want to have it also connect down to this bottom part of the C channel right down there. So that way we kind of have multiple points of contact and instead of just being able to bend this one flange, we would have to bend both of these flanges and if we have stuff inside there, the distances would have to change. So by ensuring we have a constant distance in there and attaching it between two of these, then it makes it next to impossible for us to be able to bend this out. There are three main ways of doing this, so I'm going to go ahead and break each of these down for you. So the first method we're going to cover here today is the spacer method. So what you want to do is you want to get spacers that are 7 eighths of an inch long. I sell some of these spacers that are 7 eighths of an inch long in the Clawbot kits, I believe. But additionally, if you don't have any 7 eighths inch spacers, you can also just use spacers that add up to be 7 eighths of an inch. So I have, I have a 3 8 inch spacer and a half inch spacer. So what you want to do is first off, you want to wedge these in between the C channel holes. Now this C channel you can see is bent out, so it's sliding in really easily. This isn't always going to be the case. If it's something more akin to what you have over here where the C channel is bent in, the spacer just isn't going to fit inside that gap. So you want to be able to open up that gap a bit. And it's fine if you bend the metal a little bit here because you're bending it back into place. So as you can see here, if we want to get the boxing spacer in there, we can just kind of bend that out a tiny bit, grab our spacer, and now it will slide in there. And you can see that lines up quite nicely with the holes up above. Now, if you have a brand new C channel, which is what this one is, never used on a robot before, the spacer should just slide in quite nicely and be tight enough that you can kind of slide them around without getting caught too much. Also, if you're using multiple spacers, I recommend grabbing them by the middle, kind of like this in order to be able to shove them in. If you try and just put one spacer in and then the other spacer in on top, that's gonna be much more difficult, especially if the spacing doesn't line up exactly on a not typical, on a slightly bent and slightly used C-channel. So once we have our C-channel and we know what two holes we're gonna be putting things through, we can go ahead and slide our spacers into place on the C-channel. We can go ahead and rotate that C-channel and put our other brace on top. Now we can go ahead and run our pink size screws, screws through. So these are 1.25 inch screws. I bought them off of RoboSource, so they're colored, um, but any 1.25 inch screw will work. The pink is just to designate the color. And we can kind of push those down. So as you should see with any of these boxing techniques, if you're working with an already bent piece of metal, as you go ahead and box these, you should actually see the metal bend itself back into place. And you're not ever gonna get it perfectly bent so that it's perfectly straight. But as you can see, that definitely looks a lot better than what we had before. Now, as you can see, I can't really bend this like I could before um, because this is much more secure. In order for that piece of C, in order for that flange of the C channel to bend out, um, not only would it have to move this C channel and bend that in, but if both of these C channels are bending in, the spacing inside there is going to change. So these spacers are preventing it, which is why I like to use as thick of spacers as possible and not use the thinner ones. See when we use these half inch spacers in there, which is what I have right here, you can see I can't push it in enough to line up with the hole. That's just because of the wedging on the C channel. Um, these can't go in any further, but the hole still doesn't quite line up with where it needs to be. So that's why I avoid using these for boxing. The next method that we want to use 
is standoffs. So instead of using spacers in there, we'll now go ahead and use standoffs. Again, these are 7 eighths of an inch standoffs. I bought these off of RoboSource. I don't believe Vex sells standoffs that are specifically 7 eighths of an inch long, but you could use standoffs that add up to that length. And then actually, before we do anything else, we can go ahead and get these secured down at the bottom right there. And I'm just going to use orange screws for this, um, but really any size screw will work. I would recommend using Loctite screws if you're working with standoffs usually, but since this is just a prototype, I'm not going to bother. All right, so once these standoffs are tightened, you should see those holes up top kind of line up. If they don't, you might need to loosen your standoffs ever so slightly, and there typically shouldn't be any gap here. Again, this is because I'm using an already bent C channel because I'm going out of my way at the end to try and bend it to show you guys. So then, just like our previous time, we can just go ahead, put the C-channel, rotate it, and then screw in those holes at the top with whatever same size, with whatever the same size screw you used at the bottom where will work up here. So as you can see, we have these screwed together. And by tightening those screws down, we've kind of bent the metal back into place. And just like our previous version, if I were to go try and bend these, I can't. Because again, we'd have to bend the bottom and the top here, and that distance would kind of have to change inside of there. This method I don't use most of the time. I usually use the spacer method most of the time, but I will use this if the spacing is kind of weird and I don't have room for a nut. Or already I kind of need to be screwing something in from the top and something else in from the bottom. Now, the third and final method that I know of is definitely my least favorite, just because I feel like it's significantly less precise, is what we're using Keps nuts for boxing. Also, it's worth noting, you should never just tighten a screw down like this without spacers inside. That's actually going to be weaker than not having spacers for boxing, because as you can see, I can tighten this all that I want, and that's just kind of going to bend the metal and compress it in. Um, so you're actually just going to damage your metal doing it that way. Um, you can see it's kind of bending in there. But for the Keps nut method, but for the caps nut method, what we can do is we're going to put one caps nut on the bottom right here. And we're kind of going to screw that in for a little bit. Then we're going to go ahead and put another caps nut going backwards on the top right there. And as we tighten this down, we're kind of going to have to slide these down a little bit. And this kind of relies that you already know what the exact spacing is. And we can tighten this guy down at the bottom and then we'll tighten up that guy at the top. And we can use pliers or an open-ended wrench in order to tighten that and make sure that that is secure. All right, once we have these secured, now we can go ahead and grab our C-channel from before, put it on top, and just kind of go ahead and screw it in like we normally would. We won't be able to tighten the screws down there at the bottom, which is kind of also one of the reasons I don't like this method. Besides that you, if you mess up the spacing on your caps nuts, you are going to bend your metal. Um, so up here, you could use a nut driver or you could painstakingly tighten this with like pliers or an open-ended wrench. Just kind of doing that a few times. So as you can see, we got these tightened and we got those up top and there's not any, any gaps in between here. So just like our previous versions, this is gonna also be resistant to bending. Yep, as you can see, that's not really bending despite me pulling on it. All right, so I think that about wraps it up for this one. We've covered the three types of boxings, spacers, standoffs, and caps nuts. And you should use these anytime that you're running a screw or you have the opportunity to run a screw through a C channel. This also works for U channels and there are other a couple obscure circumstances where you can use them, but that's mainly it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.